Okay, I keep trying to make these videos and I end up not liking them and then I delete them. So anyway, I woke up this morning and I was not feeling all that great. Um, I definitely still have stuff in my chest and it could result in me getting pneumonia at some point. Um, I hope that's not the case, but if I don't get a good night's sleep, it could turn into pneumonia. Um, other than that, I just wanted to say to a particular person that, you know, the TBI at 15, or whatever age I was, has no effect on how I, how I function on a daily basis now. What does have an effect at times is lack of sleep. And I do believe that when it comes to sleep, it's quality rather than quantity. Because there are days that I am just as good on very little sleep as opposed to getting eight hours of sleep. There are other days where lack of sleep means that my memory will be somewhat impaired. And that's normal. Nonetheless, the days that I have that I don't get a whole lot of sleep where I'm able to just keep on keeping on and not having issues with my memory, it just speaks to quality rather than quantity. In addition, just because, you know, I don't want anything more than a platonic relationship with anybody, that doesn't mean it has anything to do with that TBI. What it has to do with is the fact that I've always been that way. I mean, look back and I sat next to Ryan Tolner, NFL Ryan Tolner, player manager Ryan Tolner, who has a cousin named Ben Roethlisberger. I sat next to him all throughout elementary school and 7th and 8th grade. And all the girls were going gaga over him. And I could care less. You know, and it was just like... I never had the desire to chase anybody or... You know, when I look at people now and when I looked at people back then, it wasn't like, oh, you know, she's gorgeous or he's gorgeous and I want to like get with that person or whatever. I don't have that kind of thought that runs through my head that like everybody else seems to have. It's not a before and after kind of thing. It's an always has been kind of thing. I mean, I think that's something that really irritated a lot of the guys that I went to school with, especially when we hit like 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th grade, even high school. Just like, they couldn't comprehend why I just didn't have those kinds of feelings. I am the same person that I was before that I am now. I went through a bumpy few years, more than a few years, but that has nothing to do with my TBI. That just has to do with the fact that, you know, I really just was very naive. Or as MyRedBook.com Republican Felon Perjurer Sworner Perjury Slister Perjury R A P I S T Slister R A P E Assaulter Slister of Assault 422 P C Death Threat Maker Slander Slister of Slander Libel Writer Slister of Libel Writing Briber Blackmailer Extortionist Kickback Receiver Kickback Provider All that Richard Lyon Herbert used to say You're just too sheltered. You know, I know a lot more now than I did 
when I met my redbook.com Republican felon, et cetera, et cetera, Richard Lyon Herbert, I understand the way the world works a little bit better than I did back then. That doesn't have anything to do with the TBI. It just has to do with getting some life experience. On that note, there are things that I feel are unnecessary for people to go through. Or, you know, unnecessary for certain people to go through. Like, I could have gone through my whole life not knowing what BDSM is, and I would be fine. I could have gone my whole life without knowing about certain aspects of BDSM, and I would be fine. If I had have never stepped foot into a strip club and I was pretty much dragged, I would be fine. If I never learned what S-W-I-N-G-I-N-G is, and I'm not talking about kind of swing on a playground, I would be fine. I didn't need to know about those things. I really didn't. And again, that has nothing to do with the TBI. You know, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that don't know what those things are and are just hunky-dory. I'm sure there are people that go their entire lives without knowing what those things are. And they're fine having never, having to have encountered those kinds of things. And in terms of my ADHD, I don't know. I don't think psychiatrists even have any concept of how ADHD affects a person, really. I mean, I know that it's more difficult for me to learn things that I really have no interest in. That is absolutely true for uh, for those of us with ADHD, at least for me. Like, I hate history. I hate history with a passion. Learning all those dates and all the generals' names and all the majors' names... I could care less about. I have no interest. And therefore it takes me a whole lot longer to learn that kind of stuff. You know, or when you just throw just a ton of information at me all at once, like A lot of times, I find that difficult to sort through, and therefore it takes me longer to learn. There are days when I'm just in the right headspace, though, to tackle things, and I think that has to do with the amount of caffeine I've ingested, like, I do think that caffeine definitely helps with ADHD for those of us that don't take ADHD medication. Um, you know, if I've had enough caffeine, I feel like almost anything is 
easier to get through, even the stuff that I just typically have no interest in. And when I have a tougher time learning, yeah, sure, it probably does have an impact on what other people think I should be doing with my life. Like, they think I should be more extroverted, and so, yeah, you know, if I spend more time learning, I'm not going to spend time, you know, hanging out, like, paintballing or going to parties or, you know, watching movies with friends or whatnot. I'm going to be spending time studying, trying to learn the stuff that I find extremely hard to learn. And in that respect, let's talk about introversion. Because at times that's kind of fascinating to me. So some studies indicate that being an introvert is actually more prevalent than a lot of people like to think. Like some studies indicate that 50 to 70% of the population have, or 50 to 70% of the population are introverts. So for people to not understand or comprehend introversion is really kind of mind-boggling to me at times if that's the case. You know, and I definitely know that my brother will never, ever be able to wrap his mind around the fact that I'm an introvert or that I'm not like him. He's completely opposite of me. He's definitely an extrovert. He thrives on, you know, having people around or being around people. I don't thrive on being around people. It's not because, you know, I hate a lot of people or whatever. It's just, as an introvert, you know, the common theory is that we have to expend more energy being around a lot of people. And so that drains us. And so then we have to, you know, decompress after being around a lot of people. And I think that theory is pretty valid. Because I've always found that after being around a lot of people that I definitely need a lot of time to decompress. Even sometimes just going to a doctor's appointment, not because I don't like the doctor or not because, you know, I don't like what they said. It's just being an introvert, I need time to decompress from just even being around one person sometimes. You know, and just because you can't grasp that someone can be an introvert, that doesn't mean that has anything to do with a TBI that they once had. And again, me being an introvert, I've been this way my entire life. It didn't start after the TBI. I've been this way my entire life. Anybody that's known me long enough knows this. And kind of on the same wavelength, I guess. You know, there are 8 billion people in this world. And if we all try to express what we think all the time, that's just going to cause a lot of problems. There is no way for us to just express ourselves all the time, each and every one of us.
so yeah, you know, that also comes into play for me at least because I feel like other people need to be heard as well, not just me. You know, and then there are things that I just don't think that you have to say at all. I mean, I'll give you a good sample. So when I first met MyRedBook.com Republican pretending to be Dr. Ari Kriegsman, corrupt DOJ Ari Kriegsman, yeah, the first thing I noticed about him was his height. How could I not? He's six foot six, I'm five foot three. There's a little bit of a difference there. At the time, on that day, I felt that he probably heard comments about his height all the time. All day long, every day. And he probably gets sick of it. Just like I get sick of hearing how, you know, my TBI must have, like, caused me to not be interested in having, you know, relationships other than platonic relationships, or how I must be, like, anorexic and bulimic because I don't want anything more than a platonic relationship. I mean, I've heard that so many times, it's old. I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't need to hear it anymore. Because it's not true. You know, so there's just things that I feel you don't need to say. You know, and in respect to body shape and size and all that, leave that alone because Really, what should matter is who the person is at their core. Not what you see on the outside. I mean, there are so many things to consider when you look at a person and look at the outside of them. Do they have hypothyroidism? Do they have hyperthyroidism? Do they have what's known in some circles or, you know, some people might call it like gigantism or dwarfism? Do they have psoriasis? Do they have eczema? Those things are all out of a person's control. So yeah, you shouldn't look at a person, in my humble opinion, and be like, you know, they must be heavy because they eat a lot. No, I have a family member who has hypothyroidism, and that person isn't actually particularly heavy. They are heavier than probably your, you know, supermodel that's five foot nine and 110 pounds, but they're not like 300 or 400 or 500 or 600 pounds. Nonetheless, even if a person is that size, it really could be due to a lot of factors like hypothyroidism, medical issues. So there's really no reason to comment on a person's appearance 
because there are a lot of medical things that could be going on with a person. And even if there aren't or they haven't been diagnosed with something at that point, if they're comfortable in their own skin, then there's no reason for you to comment, in my humble opinion. Bite your tongue. Get to know the person. You know, on top of that, for all you suburban people that live in the suburbs, Maybe you should get to know some people that don't live in the suburbs or haven't always lived in the suburbs. And maybe you should learn that not everybody is like you. There are people that have autism in this world, or there are people that are autistic in this world. There are people that have verbal tics. There are people that have non-verbal tics. There are people that just don't think like you do. And if you've lost the ability to be compassionate or empathetic and you live in the suburbs, maybe you should work on that. And that's where I'm ending this video.